Oh, Senator Ossoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you to our panelists for joining us today, to all of you for your, your testimony uh, and your courage in speaking publicly and speaking before the Senate. I think it's worth just stepping back and acknowledging the tremendous stress and anxiety that so many across the country are dealing with for so many reasons, but that without question, as we see in survey after survey, as we see from mental health professionals, from psychologists, psychiatrists, counselors, that LGBTQ youth are experiencing, particularly in a political and cultural environment, uh, where as we've discussed today, these issues are being hotted up and exploited to score cheap political points and to divide people. And when we see vulnerable people targeted by powerful politicians for the purposes of dividing people and gaining power with reckless disregard for the impact that it has on particular children and young people who are struggling, who are bullied, who are marginalized, who are bravely grappling to reconcile themselves and how they feel about themselves with the expectations of family and society, and then a political environment is imposed upon them in which they're made the center of attention and a focus of criticism and hatred, children. I think it's worth just stepping back and powerful people in the U.S. Senate reflecting on the impact of our words, our deeds, our statements. Ms. Robinson, I have some data here from Georgia. would like your, your view on it. Recent data from the Trevor Project. 72% of LGBTQ youth in Georgia experiencing serious anxiety. 59% symptoms of depression. 46% seriously considering suicide within the last year. Can you comment on the impact it has on vulnerable and marginalized youth when they're made political targets in this endless partisan power struggle in the nation's capital? It's, it's absolutely devastating. It's devastating the ways that we've put a target on the back of trans youth. And I think about the history of my movement when the AIDS epidemic came to the forefront in the 80s, by the early 90s, you had lost a whole generation of gay men. I don't want us to repeat that story with our trans youth. This is a time where we can offer them the support, the resources, the affirmation and validity of their existence to ensure that they survive. And when they do, we get people that are as whole and as happy as folks like Harley at the end of this table. This is a real opportunity for us to ensure that the most vulnerable among us is protected because our rights are and our civil liberties are intertwined. And Ms. Robinson, in addition to the impact on the mental health, the sense of whether or not one's community and society is welcoming and loving and kind, or whether one is being turned into a, a target and a bargaining chip between political parties and a struggle for power. It's, of course, not just the impact on the individual's mental health, but it's the risk of being targeted by a violent act or a hate crime. Additional data Nationwide, according to the FBI, nearly one in five hate crimes in 2021 were motivated by anti-LGBTQ bias. Between 2017 and 2020, DOJ data demonstrating extreme levels of violence against LGBTQ persons across the country, again, just 
I'm asking you, please, to remind the Senate that what we do here has a powerful impact on people's sense of well-being and on the risk they face of violence. Can you comment on the risk of violence, please? Absolutely. I mean, I talk to people every day. They're living in a space of feeling isolated and fearing, fear, feeling fearful for their very lives. I talk to black trans women who, again, have experienced another deadly year, and they talk about going out the house to walk their dog or go to school and being fearful that that, that will be the day they don't get to go home again. I talk to parents of trans youth that are fleeing their state because they feel that their family and their child will not be safe and will not get to grow into an adult. This is a crisis. And the hardest part is that this is a crisis that is man-made, that the people can solve for by stopping these bad pieces of legislation and stopping the violent rhetoric that take away the humanity of trans people in the LGBTQ plus community. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Welch. Uh, thank you, 